Good afternoon, Year 6. We are reading Sky Song Chapter 8 um, now. So, is everyone ready? Yeah. Where on earth have you been, Tomkin shouted. Flint winced. But before he could reply, a small tubby girl dropped down from a swing and charged through the ropes towards him. Her hair was short and wild about her face, as if she'd cut it herself in a hurry without a mirror, or even without scissors. My brother, you give me happy, she cried, flinging her arms around Flint's waist. Flint reddened and for a moment he forgot all about the trouble he was in. Instead, he felt Eska's eyes on him and he wondered whether she could see that Blue was different from everyone else in the tribe. That her eyes were smaller and sloping, like almonds, and that her words came out all jumbled, even though she was eight and she should have known better. But when she glanced at Eska, he saw she wasn't frowning. She wasn't raising her eyebrows in disgust either, like some people did when they spoke to Blue. She was just watching carefully, as he'd noticed she often did, without saying anything at all. So Blue obviously has some sort of learning disorder, doesn't she, okay? Um, which means that she finds it difficult to speak. And actually, even though she's eight years old, she doesn't actually act maybe like an eight-year-old all the time. I miss you, brother, Blue said. Flint ruffled her hair. I'm here now. Blue tickled Pebble beneath his chin. Then she turned to Eska and shot out a little hand. Who are you? I'm Blue. Eska blinked. I'm... Her words were cut short by a thump. Tomkin had leapt down from his swing and was striding across the room. He drew himself up before them, a necklace of razor-sharp bear claws sprayed around his neck, a large knife hanging from his belt, and Eska found the words drying up in her mouth. Tomkin jabbed a finger in Eska's direction. Who is she? She's not a spy, Tomkin, Flint said quickly. There were rumours from the swings around them, murmurs from the swings around them. At least, I'm almost certain she's not. I met her at Winterfang. Tomkin's eyes blazed. Winterfang? Why were you in the Ice Queen's palace? I was trying to rescue Ma. Of all the reckless, stupid, irresponsible things you've done, Tomkin spat. This is the worst. Blue clung on to Flint's arm. Be nice, Tomkin, be nice to brother. But Tomkin didn't even look at his sister. Instead, he narrowed his eyes at Flint. You're still inventing things, aren't you? Even though I told you to stop. N no, d definitely not, Flint grimaced, knowing how hollow his words had sounded. He'd never been a good liar. You made a bunch of stupid objects you thought could help rescue Ma, Tomkin hissed, but they didn't work. They never work, Flint. When will you learn that magic can't be trusted? Blue put her hands over her ears. You're not an inventor, you're a warrior, like the rest of us fur tribe, or at least you're meant to be. Tomkin shot a glance at Pebble, who was peeping out of Flint's hood. And it's high time you dumped that fox pub back in the wild where it belongs. When we found its mother dead last spring, you were told to drown that pup because he wouldn't survive without her. He shook Flint by the shoulders and Pebble leapt down from Flint's hood and cowered behind Aska. You're too old for pets now and you're too old for me to be rushing around deep roots trying to find you. Flint shrunk inside of his furs. The whole tribe was listening to what a terrible disappointment he was. Even Aska now knew it and the shame burned his cheeks. Blue let out a whimper and Flint stroked her hair. You're upsetting Blue, he said quietly. I'm upsetting Blue, Tom Tomkin spat. You ran away. For a moment his eyes softened. Imagine if he hadn't come back. Flint reached out to touch the necklace his little sister wore, the one he had made by attaching a rabbit paw to a loop of willow twine. It was a good luck tal talisman, also the carvings he'd found in the woods claimed, and Flint hoped that he would keep his sister safe. I'd always come back, Blue, he whispered, always. Blue wriggled free and poked Tomkin in the stomach. Not nice words, be friends. Tomkin sighed. We spent months and months building this hideaway, Flint. We can't afford to have the Ice Queen and her spies finding your tracks and, ha and finding us. Flint shook his head. It snowed last night. Our tracks are covered. Until Deep Roots, at least. I wouldn't put us in any sort of danger. There was a few mumblings from the fur tribe. Then someone called out. What about the girl? Why is she here? We've no room for outsiders. Eska took a small step behind Flint. This is Eska, Flint said to his brother. I don't really know who, he who she is, but she was the Ice Queen's prisoner. And I think she knows things that could help us. There was a long, painful silence. Then Blue turned to Eska, shot out her hand once again and said, I'm Blue. Can you close the door for me? Eska took her hand and tried to smile, but one by one, the fur tribe stood up on their swings and that's when this shouting began. Look at her eyes, one girl cried. She's a tusk spy. She's not welcome here, a boy shrieked. She's the Ice Queen's pet. Tell her to leave. We can fight our rebellion without an outsider. Tomkin put his hand up and the voices were quelled. That means stopped or silenced. That's enough. I need to speak with my brother alone. Flint turned to Eska, then pointed to an empty hammock beside him. Sit there, he said, 
and don't attempt any conversations. Esker seemed about to say something, but Tomkin was already marching off between the swings and Flint had to hurry to keep up. The tribe were muttering now, casting fierce looks towards the visitor sitting at the door, near the door, but Flint ignored them. He ignored Tomkin whispering to Blade, Tomkin's second in command, as they passed. But as he stooped to enter a small tent made of caribou skins at the far end of the room, he glanced back towards Esker. Blue was chatting away to her and Pebble was hopping between them. He paused for a second. There was something about the girl, something he couldn't put a finger on. She wasn't strong or impressive, and yet he was starting to believe that there was something special about her voice, something a secret maybe, something important. He ducked inside the tent to find his brother sitting on a stool. Barely taking a breath, Tomkin launched into his lecture. The fur tribe fight with weapons, not far-fetched ideas, and you need to remember that. Flint waited to tell Tom Tomkin about his how well his whistle had worked, about how he had so nearly managed to reach their mark. But Tomkin raised a hand before those sentences could unravel, and with a heavy heart, Flint filled his brother in on all that he had seen and heard in Winterfang Palace and about the things Esker had told him of the, of the Ice Queen's plans. What if Esker can help us, Flint said. Tomkin snorted. That runt you dragged in, she, she could be of no help to anyone. And a voice, Flint, even from you, that type of thing is ridiculous. How could a voice beat the Ice Queen? You've been spun a line by that girl. You've been a spun a line means you've been lied to. At least speak to Esker, Flint muttered. He got up to go. Just listen to what she has to say. Then you can decide, Tomkin sighed. There's no point, Flint. There might be. With that, he hurried from the tent to go and find Esker. But as he wove through the ropes, he noticed how quiet the room was. The rest of the fur tribe were crouched on their swings, watching him with slinted eyes. And when Flint reached the door, he saw that only Blue and Pebble were on the hammock. Esker was nowhere to be seen. Flint made a dash towards the door, but a bulky boy clad in lynx furs blocked the, his way. Whose side are you on, Flint? Blade asked, and Flint realised what had happened, why Tomkin had whispered to Blade on his way to the tent. You made her leave, didn't you? He said quietly. On Tomkin's orders, Blade raised his chin. She didn't belong here. Tomkin's right. We can't trust outsiders of the time like this. Flint chewed his lip. Back at the food store, he had planned to abandon Esker and, to and if Tomkin saw no use for her. But then he'd seen her with the eagle, so stubborn and fierce, and something inside him had shifted. There was no more to Esker than the, there was more to Esker than had first met the eye. Yet she'd messed up his he'd she'd messed up his chances of freeing his ma. But did she really deserve to be cast out? And what if her voice really was the key to defending the ice defeating the ice queen? Flint glanced up at the fur tribe and tried to read their faces, but one by one they turned away, so that he was left looking at a sea of backs. And then Tomkin emerged from the tent and made his way through the swings towards his brother. It's time to grow up, Flint. We need warriors, not dreamers, to bring the rest of our tribe home. Blue picked up Pebble and stroked his head. Where your friend, Flint? I like friend. Flint felt something tug inside him, but he shook it away, remembering instead the humiliation of being shouted at by Tomkin in front of everyone, and he turned his heart in the direction of his tribe. She wasn't my friend, he muttered. She was a stupid Tusk tribe spy. And that's the end of chapter eight. So do we think, is he going to the end of chapter eight? Yeah. Is is he going to go after Esker or is he going to, do you think he's going to pick his tribe and stick there with them? I what do you think? Gonna pick his tribe. I think he's going to stay with the tribe. I feel like, yeah, Ooh. same. So he might sneak out. I like that idea. Yeah. Um, so if you're at home now watching this, you can share your ideas about what you think Flint is going to do with the parents at home. Um, see you all soon. Bye. You want to say bye? Bye. bye.